Philadelphia, if you're from the hip hop community, if you're from the African American community, what we're gonna do is we're gonna deal with this label that we hear uh, uh, coined uh, a derogatory term, I should say, cooning. So, Massify, go ahead. And, uh, this is really your operation. You're the man with the plan in terms of the journalist. I'm just the man that's providing the commentary. So go ahead and introduce yourself to the people and what we got for the folks today. Yeah, so uh, peace to the Hip Hop Success family, audience, uh, all the Facebook viewers, uh, Google+, Plus, Instagram, everybody that's following. Uh, we have our Game Rich uh, vlog number two. And today we're going to be talking about um, if hip hop celebrities are cooning right now during this whole Donald Trump era, and if they are, or if so, why? And so I put some questions together that I'm gonna ask my fellow co-founder, Coach Tony Brace, and see how he feels about it and give us his uh, perspective from the game rich mentality and mind rich mentality that uh, he's coined. So let's just get right into it. Uh, my first question for you, Coach, is how do you feel about black celebrities just meeting with Donald Trump, considering he is president, he's President Trump now, and uh, he's getting a lot of flack for the negative and divisive campaign he's ran in the past. And so people are meeting with him, especially black folks. And so how do you feel about that? Yeah, that's a great question. So my thoughts, my feelings around uh, African-American celebrities meeting with Donald Trump. Um, we live in the United States of America, okay? So we live in a republic uh, where freedom and the ability to be mobile, connect with people, uh, that's top priority. So um, African-Americans, unfortunately, we were uh, detained in slavery for many, many years. So appreciating freedom is something that I most definitely value. So as far as a celebrity meeting with Donald Trump, it makes me no difference, you know. At the end of the day, no one really knows what the true agenda is or what the true intentions are. Um, I like to come from an optimistic point of view, so I would hope that they're bringing an agenda that's relevant to, to the end. You know, I don't pay attention to a lot in terms of what's going in, what's going on in the details behind the stuff, but from my understanding, and you can correct me if, if I'm wrong, if you have some more understanding on this, but they were meeting to, to talk about economic development from the inner city, which I happen to be from the inner city, and I happen to work with inner city youth as well. So most definitely, uh, if the agenda is in the interest of economic development for the, for the inner city, i.e. job development, i.e. Uh, bringing back and remodeling neighborhoods that are, are abandoned, such as cities like where you're in right now, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Detroit, Michigan, Baltimore, all over the, the country here in Las Vegas. Uh, I'm with it, if, if, if that's the true agenda. Then I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay, so then let me throw this uh, curve at you for the fact that we know Donald Trump, President Trump, has, you know, proven that he does not believe the vast number of intelligence agencies that have collected data, uh, sensitive data that they've shown to him, and yet he still shows speculation in the highest forms of intelligence and the uh, highest positions giving him this classified information, he don't believe them. So why should black folks think that if celebrities, Steve Harvey, uh, Jim Brown, Ray Lewis, if they meet with Donald Trump, what makes us feel like he's going to listen to them if he won't even listen to the CIA. You, you kind of cut out on me, Fi. I didn't catch the, the tail end of, of your question. So my question was, if Donald Trump won't listen to the heads of the intelligence uh, organizations, why should black people think that he's going to listen to people like Jim Brown, Ray Lewis, or Steve Harvey? Yeah, that's another great question. So to paraphrase, you're saying that, hey, if Donald Trump is stubborn, if he's if, if he's in that ego mind state and he's unwilling to work with the intelligence community, uh, why would he be willing to work with the African-American or minority community? Is that is that is that the question that you're posing? That is correct. OK, so 
you know, at the end of the day, right? Every day when we wake up in the morning, we hope and pray that the system will be there. We hope and we pray that bombs don't drop from North Korea, or from whomever our perceived enemies are, that sort of thing. So by no means is Coach Tony Brace putting uh, faith into Donald Trump. If, if you want to be real here on, on a barometer of a scale from 1 to 100, I might give him about 30% trust. But well, my point is we got to be willing to see what he's going to do. If we just throw up our hands and say, oh, he's just, you know, whoever meets with Donald Trump is a sellout, they're a coon, then for me, that's, that, that's the wrong mentality. I, at the end of the day, I think we need to shift our focus internally on ourselves and, and, and be real about it and say, you know who the real coons are, the real coons are Soldier Boy, uh, uh, all these rappers that continue to perpetuate this negativity towards women, negative negativities towards the community and not only just the rappers you know that's selling out for Rome if you will meaning that they're selling out for their gold and their silver coins i.e money or currency okay but also people in your own neighborhood okay I guarantee you right now on the blocks in St. Louis you and I if we can hit a couple of corners and we can see some straight up de degenerate bullshit going on whatever that may be but no one within the community is policing the ourselves and holding each other accountable. You see what I'm saying? So the way that I look at it is we are upside down, backwards and inside out in terms of our mentality, in terms of our programming, labeling things. When I look at that shit, that's cooning to me. You know what I mean? I'm straight from the turf, straight from the inner city. I didn't go to college. I'm self-made, that sort of thing. So I feel that I'm credible to speak on these things because I can see it from different perspectives. I can see it from the ground level, from the crackhead all the way up to the to, to the boardroom, which they might be on crack too. You know what I mean? They just might be functioning and wearing it with a, with a mask, if you will, and that's a whole nother conversation. Uh, but my point is, if we want to see change, we got to evaluate things, okay, and then look for the results. Year after year after year, all we've been getting is hoodwinked whether it was an Obama administration, the Bush administration, or a Clinton administration. So all I want to know is, you know, with Donald Trump, we know the truth about him. We know that he has some, some prejudice ways. You know, I can't say that he's a racist because I don't know, but I've seen some prejudice moves that he's pulled. Uh, we were talking about it before with the young men in the Central Park where he pulled out that ad. Uh, we know that uh, he feels some sort of way, if you want to say a superiority complex over women, that sort of thing. We can identify that. But all we need to do is hold him accountable for our interests. A lot of times when you turn on the TV, you hear these politicians talk about interests, nat national interests, 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 interests. I'm just trying to say, you know, give him a shot, if you will, to see if he's going to represent the interests of our community. And I don't know if he genuinely don't give a rat and he's back there tap dancing and, you know, has another agenda to, to siphon some money because billions of dollars. I don't know. All I'm saying is for us to jump out there without looking at the results and calling somebody cool, I think that that's, that's, that's crazy. Number one, if you understand the etymology of the term cool, uh, which comes from barracoon, which in, in the slave days, they were putting us in a cage before they shipped us off. They put us in, in this cage and it was called a barracoon. So that's where that term comes from. You feel me? No, absolutely. Yeah. And you kind of already answered my second question, which was, do you think it's right that people say black folks meeting with him you, cutting are cooning? It's not really fair. You waited what Donald Trump is going to do, and yet black folks are trying to stay in an optimistic mindset, just like you said, meeting with him and then seeing what he's bringing to the table. I mean, he's only he hasn't even been president for 24 hours. You know, like let 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 let's see something develop. You know, exactly. That that's all that I'm talking about. Let's just see things develop. I'm, you know, I'm optimistic, but I'm realistic at the same time. You know, when you look at everything in the world, everything on this planet, as far as I see, there's always dualities, polarities. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at the world through a set of 
optimistic lenses, but I'm also looking at the world through a set of skepticism lenses as well. And all I want to see is how this thing is going to play out. Okay. Well, so I'm concerned anyone just throwing labels on Ray Lewis to great Jim Brown, which I personally have been to Jim Brown's homes, uh, uh, his home in Hollywood a couple of times in 1998. I had the privilege of performing at his house. That man is far from a coon. He's very tied in uh, to some of the, you know, notorious gang members in the city of Los Angeles. When he picks up the telephone, people listen. So, you know, I had an issue with people calling the great Jim Brown a coon, because as far as I'm concerned, I look at Jim Brown parallel to how I look at Muhammad Ali. And I, and I love and respect Muhammad Ali. I just think that Jim Brown was a little bit more reserved in the cut with his, but he's always been he's always been about civil rights and he's always been about uh, poor blacks in, in, in messed up neighborhoods where I come from, if you will. Yeah, Jim Brown's a good man. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, I was kind of shocked that people kind of lashed out at him just very quickly. I mean, you know, when you see it, you know, at face value, you're like, holy crap, shock value. Why is he standing next to him? But to label him a coon, that's a very loaded term. And understand Jim Brown has a very loaded and very accomplished history. So you can't take that away from that man at all, you know. Um, so, yeah, so for my next question, I'd like to know some examples. I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper since we're talking about hip-hop culture. What hypocrisies do you see exist within the hip hop community when it comes to this issue of cooning and calling people out yet not looking in the mirror, like, you know, what, what do you see is going on there? And what do you think is the source of that? That's a great question. Again, for those that's in Facebook world, they may not be able to hear you ask me these great questions. Um, so again, we're gonna paraphrase uh, for the people out in Facebook land. I see a couple of people that are tuned in. So. To recap this, you're asking me what are some of the hypocrisies that I've identified in the hip hop culture? Absolutely. That, that I would label cooning, if you will, if we're going to use that term. And I'm not even going to label it cooning because I told you what that derogatory term comes from. You know, well, and anybody yes, that on their computer right now, look up the word barracoon with two R's and tell me what you find. Yeah. Um, but uh, what I see in terms of selling out or, or putting on Sambo shoes, if you will, is selling out for, like I said, selling out in Rome, doing what the Romans are doing, doing for gold and silver. And, you know, think about this, man. Look at, look at these commercials. We're right now, everybody's watching, you know, uh, NFC, AFC championship games and all that, which I don't give a rat's ass about none of that, you know, as far as I'm con concerned. If you tuned in and that's your life, that could be labeling you selling out yourself because you could be using some time energy uh, to, em to empower yourself where your skill set and your performance level goes up for the income for you and your family. So let me just say that first. Uh, but in terms of selling out, let me go back to what I was tying this to in the theme of, of commercials and networks. Remember when Lil Wayne did that commercial with Samsung? Okay. Where he was demonstrating the, uh, the waterproof, the waterproof phone. Now the term coon that could be applied in that way. Again, I don't want to use it, but did you, did you see how that played out? Yeah. That's right. Damn fool. Portraying a certain image of hip hop, the culture of African Americans and himself. That's an example of selling out. That's an example of hypocrisy. You know, some of these dudes are becoming super, super, super bold these days. And when you start to listen to their lyrics now, they're being questioned because they have lines that's been women. Savage 21 that had to defend himself. Rich homie Quan, Rick Ross, where, you know, Hip hop is a language of uh, sometimes you got to decode things because it's metaphor, similes, allegory, figurative language, and all this sort of stuff, like you see in, in, in religious books, if you will. So you got to decode things. Uh, but some of these dudes are going beyond where you're decoding it and just kind of telling you straight out that, hey, 
you know, if this chick ain't with my program, I'll just slip a molly in her drink and do my thing. That's selling out. Those dudes need to be held accountable. And I don't see us marching every motherfucking day, excuse my French, to stop the nonsense. That's what we need to be doing. Fuck Donald Trump and worrying about that pay stuff and what the images that we're portraying for our babies, our children. That's a great question. And, and I, I like the example you did with uh, Rick Ross, too. I mean, you know, he lost his, his Reebok deal after yes. that whole case came up. But, I mean, a lot more should have – he should have got way more blowback than he actually did. I mean, he literally, in the bars, just literally said, you know, oh, whatever. Yeah. I'm just like, wow. Name of the song, Fi. You didn't even know it. That's how – you see what I'm you saying? You didn't even know it, yeah. I mean, I mean – it's clear as day. Everybody's singing it in the club. Just, you know. Going in there a line you didn't even know that he's trying to, to be sneaky with a woman and put her in a position that she would never put herself in. That if a man put my daughter in, in off with your head. You right. Feel <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. All right, man. So the, my next question to you is, what are some solutions to bridge the divide with Trump and minorities? Like, what what do you think he can do? Let's not talk about what we can do now. What do you think he can do? What, what, what opportunities do you think he has that he can come in and try to create some sort of dialogue to where we can make some progress? I mean, right now, the rhetoric, he's, he's claiming that he's doing that. If you hear him talk about, you know, it's open for all Americans, uh, you know, a seat at the table, if you will. Um, he's talking to these celebrities, which I don't know why it needs to be celebrities. You need to be sitting down and talking with the people that are ground level in the community. Go to Watts, go to Baltimore and find out who the real community leaders are and sit down with them. You know what I mean? Because we know right. what the set celebrities are going to do. Nine times out of ten, there is an agenda, okay? And it's an agenda where they capitalize financially. Um, so all he can do is demonstrate action man we heard we hear the cliche talk is cheap get a man a shot to demonstrate action okay how long we can decide collectively how much that time frame should be i want to get a man at least seven eight months okay and see what type of plan that he has that's in the interest of my community does that make sense absolutely absolutely now for my next question i want to is what what mentality should people of hip hop culture adopt moving forward in a Trump presidency? I mean, like, is it is it a mind rich mentality? Is it a you know I got to take care of myself and just worry about me? Is it a you know organizational thing where we need to need to organize and wait to see what happens? Like, what what, what do you think? Like, two 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 bold uh, uh, plans you think people should do? Two bold mentalities. First off, let me just, let me just say, you know, I can't tell anybody what they should be doing, uh, but because I'm a coach and I, I do uh, focus on results, I can't make recommendations. Okay, so a couple of things that the hip hop community can be doing is be organic, tap back into that dope creativity. That's how hip hop was birthed. It was made from nothing, man. It was made from DJs out there playing with their moms, James Browns, and find uh, records, finding break beats, and people having fun and tapping into some inner energy, some inner frequency, and just being creative, okay? I think we need to tap back into that there. Tap it back into that energy, number one. And number two, because we're in a capitalistic society and a technological society, I think hip hop, and we're already doing that now, but we need to continue on that trajectory of entrepreneurialism because now we don't need the big labels. We don't need Hollywood. It's direct to consumer. Right now, we're on Facebook Live. Right now, we're on YouTube Live. Right now, we're on Instagram Live, okay? Collectively, we may have 200, 300 eyeballs on us right now, okay? That's equivalent to if you and I were in an auditorium speaking and we had 200, 300 people in a seat, our message is being heard. So take advantage of these technologies, okay? 
that's what I recommend that the hip hop community does become independent, become reliant on yourself. With all due respect, again, excuse my French, but fuck relying on government, man. You feel me? I come from the turf. I come from ground level. I never depended on the government. I never depended on the gang members of my hood. I never come depended on the dope boys. You know who I depended on? The most high creator, God, and myself. That's my recommendation. Bye. Great words. Great Great advice right there. I hope everybody listen and pay attention. Then you can always go back and get these notes. Yeah, because it takes multiple people to make this happen. Now, I'm not saying that you should have an individualistic mentality, but look out for yourself. Work on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like to, to use a, a, a visual, if you will. If you imagine a line coming across my chest, right? And I talked about earlier, today we live in a world of polarities. You can be in your higher wisdom from the heart up, or you can be in your lower wisdom from the tummy down where greed and lust and all that other stuff happens. You see what I'm saying? So we need more people on their higher selves because we're in an information world. We're in an information age, a knowledge age, okay? And then once people become wise, then wisdom is beauty. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Then the collective consciousness comes together and, and there's that harmony if you will it's the opposite of bitch better have my money whoop de whoop 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 that whoop de whoop syndrome that i talk about that i'm anti about so again i'm not gonna go on on a tangent this is coach tony brace your hip-hop business coach your hip-hop sales coach i don't even have to talk about these issues because as i told you earlier you know i can navigate through the matrix if you will but it hurts me to see my people over and over. Dude, in the last 24 hours, you know how many people I've seen exert so much energy into the matrix and just get sucked in? Just like they're being sucked in right now watching a performance, cheering, screaming for your team. When you sit back and look at that, yeah, it's cool. People say, hey, Tony, it's entertainment. Man, I value sports, man. If it wasn't for sports, I would probably be on the real be dead and in prison, just keeping it 100 with you because I played a lot of youth sports. But my point is, you got to look at it from a different angle, okay? Look at it from how the game is played. These are pros, okay? In order to get to that level, you have to work hard and you have to master your skills. You see what I'm saying? And I'm here to push an agenda to the people. That's why we created Hip Hop Success TV. Okay, tap into that higher wisdom and then come with the formula of reach one, teach one. That's what I'm doing. You see what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. And paid to teach. I get paid to coach because results are on the line. But this is me giving back to the people, if you will. So that's how I feel about it. Again, shout out to the Facebook world. I see multiple people out there. Coach Tony Brace. You guys may not be able to hear uh, some great questions that Fire is asking me, but when we put this thing together, it'll be fully wrapped with a production, and you'll be able to hear the, the context of the questions he was asking. All right, so for my final question, I, I, I wanted to know, do you feel we live in an era where there's more equality, or do you feel we live in an era where there are more handouts being given, or is it both? You know, because we're on this live stream, Phi, you cut out again. So I, I believe your question was dealing with, come again? Do we live in an era of more equality? Uh, okay. Or do we live in an era where there are more handouts being given? The question is, do we live in an era where there's more equality or more handouts? I think we live in an era of, of, of both. Both. And you have to ask yourself, who's behind the agenda of handouts? And ain't no Absolutely. handouts, ain't no handouts in nature. No, I mean you. I mean honestly, you gotta produce I'm, to uh, get results. Of, of, of what's the dude's name that believes that we evolved from monkeys? What's that cat's name? Help me out. Oh, that if we evolved from monkeys. Who uh come on Eric. You joined Neil, uh, Neil, 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 Degrassi, Neil deGrasse Tyson? 
my, my brain is locked up because I'm focused on hip hop and, and, and not on science at this moment. But my point that I'm trying to make is nature, man, and nature will reward you if you follow the system, right? If you plant on the right soil, if there's the right sunlight, if there's the right water and all that sort of stuff. So yes, we are in a society where people expect handouts. A lot of times people blame it on uh, the millennials and that, that sort of, but there's always been an agenda behind that, okay? And what I think, what the agenda was behind that to make us as a society weaker. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of like, I live in Las Vegas and everything happens in this city, pimping and hoeing, hoes and pimps. The pimp makes the hoe, the prostitute depend on her. So there's an agenda because he or she is weak, if you will. Right. So I think, yes, absolutely, we live out in, in a handout society. Now, the flip side of the question was, you, you were asking me, do we live in a society where we're given more freedom? Right. Is that what you, is that? Um, are we given more freedom? Yes, but I look at life through a metaphysical and a scientific set of lens, again, always cautious of the illusion of freedom. You see what I'm saying? Because that's what it really is. Yeah. Meaning, if I want to go out in my backyard and do something, I have to go get permission from a homeowners association. I have to go get permission from the county to do something very simple. That's not freedom in, in, in our country. We didn't always operate like that, you know? Uh, your people are from East Africa, right? Yes. You got from, from East Africa, and I think you got family from Haiti as well. Absolutely, okay. that's right. So on their land, they might be a little bit more free in terms of sovereignty because if they want to go build something on a land, I don't think they have to ask the government or the local chief to do it. Right. They can just do it. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, that, that was a great answer. And, uh, yeah, so that concludes all my questions, Coach. My next thing is, do you have any other final thoughts to uh, close out this second episode of Game Rich? Yeah, so the final thoughts to the people out there, Facebook world, Instagram world, YouTube world, is just be an ind independent thinker. Quit jumping on the bandwagon of what you see in the media. Quit jumping on the bandwagon of what you hear in your environment and really look at things scientifically, okay? Examine these things before you just come out and start making these statements. The truth of the matter is racism is here. It's a lie, but it's hidden. You, you feel me? We don't know who they are anymore. Come out and say, this person's racist, this person's prejudice. We don't know until the actions is shown. Like when we see these police shootings, we can say that's a form of racism because we see it, it's evident, right? And then we have another side that tries to justify it by saying the young man looked like he was reaching for his whatever and he looks scary. We know the bullshit with that. You see what I'm saying? Right. But with the, the facts, let's deal with the truth before we start labeling people like the great Jim Brown a coon, man. And if you're going to label anybody a coon, start labeling these rappers a, a, a coon. You know what I mean? Last night, I was turning up. Turning up. I put a Facebook Live on, uh, and I was banging uh, Migos, right? They straight right. My consciousness is above that. I would never buy into what they're, what they're talking about. But you and I know there's people that buy into that nonsense every day. Oh, yeah. Every day. You know what I mean? That's where they get their education from, from that shit right there. You feel me? I'm just, I'm just vibing to the beat because I love, I love music. And I'm like, if, if, you know, I'm known for trapping, for speaking over beats. If I touch that beat, I can take bad and bougie and, and, and flip it in a whole nother way where it's a little bit more warmer and it's better for your digestive system, if you will. You know what I mean? I like to say that. When I'm putting my words together in the music, I'm trying to be healthy for your body like vitamins and minerals, okay? And that's important. What you put in comes out. So, again, bad information in equals bad information out. out. So people are consuming bad information. 
Hence, in the last few months, we're hearing about this fake news shit. Fake news been going on forever, man. Okay? Fake, fake bullshit has been going on in the hood forever, man. Materialism and, and all this nonsense that we buy into has been going on forever. In 17, man, mankind has to wake up. Video cameras are every, everywhere. Everything that we do is monitored. Every action that we that we take, our phones, they're all being monitored. You know, government agencies can listen to our phone calls at any time. We don't have any fear, if, if you will. So all I could say is work on yourself, change. Let's come together as a, as a collective, as a whole, as a humanity, and let's be the change that we want to see. And, well, and I know it's a difficult challenge, man. Yeah, and I, I know we'll all get it together at some point. Um, Coach Juan, thank you. Uh, it's always fun coming on the show. The game rich. want to thank all the viewers for, through Facebook, uh, Google+, Plus. Instagram Live. Um, uh, we have, we'll have another Game Rich episode coming with you uh, for next week. And uh, you can contact me, Mastify, at M A S T A underscore P H I on all social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And coach, how can they get in contact with you? They can contact me at Coach Tony Brace. Or you can reach me directly on my website, CoachTonyBrace.com. If you want to hit me on my business phone, you can call me toll-free in the United States, 888-775-9914. I am your hip-hop business coach, your sales coach, your sales trainer. And at the end of the day, when we're dealing with this thing called capitalism and commerce, you need to be starting with one goal. And that goal should be, what is your income goal? Period. And then you work backwards and you break it down from there. So if your income goal is 70000 for a year for the year because it gives you the ability to have this lifestyle and you're not quite there yet, let's develop a plan on how we're going to get there, okay? And then we have to be realistic in terms of doing an inventory skill sets. Do you have the skill sets? Do you have the resources? Do you have the network? to get to that goal. And if you don't, I'm going to tell you flat out that you don't and recommend some things that you can do in order to tighten that up, if you will. Boom. All right, Coach, well, that wraps it up for me. Um, we'll be in touch next week, and we got that show coming for you real soon. No doubt. Coach Tony Brace, HipHopSuccess.tv, Master Fire. We want to say peace and blessings. And we